our neighborhood. Uh, it's just unacceptable. So please consider it when it comes forward to you. Thanks. Thank you, Dale. Does anybody else have any non-agendized uh, items that they'd like to speak to at this time? Hearing none, we'll close public comments at this time. Uh, we'll move to the consent calendar. This is the time to, for the commission to consider the matters of the consent calendar uh, for items A and B. Does any of the members have a correction to the minutes or items that they wish to pull uh, for separate discussion or abstain on? Hearing none, um, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Second. Beatrice, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, no one is absent at this time this evening. Uh, we'll go on to the business calendar. Uh, <clears throat> please be advised that the action of the Planning Commission shall become effective on the day following the first regularly scheduled City Council meeting after the 10-day appeal period unless, if allowed by the State Santa Ana Municipal Code, an appeal to the City Council is filed with the Clerk of the Council and a copy is sent to the Planning Department within 10 days of the date of the Commission action or unless set for public hearing by the City Council. An appeal from a decision or requirement of the Planning Commission may be made by any interested party, individual, or group. At this time, I'd like to uh, discuss item number one, conditional use permit number 2017-31 to allow the sale of alcoholic beverages for off-premise consumption at the uh, South Rancho Market located at 2429 West McFadden Avenue, Units 101 and 102. Do any of the commissioners have anything they wish to disclose at this time? Hearing none, Jerry, please give us your presentation. Good evening, Plan Commissioners. As previously stated, this is an application for a conditional use permit to allow the sale of alcohol for off-premise consumptions at an existing market located at 2429 West McFadden Avenue, Units 101 and 102. Just to give a, a quick uh, background in terms of the location of the premises, the market itself has been in operation since the 1980s and was pr primarily occupying units 101, 102, and 103. And they also have, currently are selling beer and wine. So this is just the site location. The um, market itself is located at the south, I mean the northeast corner of Sullivan Street and McFadden. And it's with an existing um, multi-tenant commercial development. This is just a site photo of the existing market. So this is the proposed floor plan. As previously stated, the original market occupied unit 101, 102, 103. In 2007, there was a change of ownership, which reduced the market to just unit 102. Um, the applicant, Mr. Tulasi, purchased the uh, market at early of last year, as well as a water store. So what he is proposing to conduct is basically remove a demising wall to expand his operations into <coughs> Unit 101. Um, currently, Unit 101 is a water store, and Mr. Tulasi is um, basically keeping that same operation, just removing that dividing wall to allow for his logistics and operational um, methods to be better serve his, his needs. And with that, staff is recommending that the Planning Commission approve the conditional use permit. Um, the operational standards identified in the Santa Ana Municipal Code will ensure that the premises would not become a nuisance to the adjacent uh, vicinity. And with that, we're recommending approval of conditional use permit number 2017-31. Thank you, Jerry. Does the Commission have any questions of uh, staff? Hearing none, does the applicant have any, uh, would the applicant like to speak at this time? If you would, come on up, you can, come on up to the microphone if you would, please. So, our purpose is to serve water from the community, as well as its survival. Can we have you come up to the microphone? <laughs> Chairman and the other members. So my name is Tulasi and I bought this 
yes, cancer market in the beginning of means uh, early 17 and with the water and then just to removing the wall and use the conditional per um, permit to sell the alcohol from the both unit is n will not increase the alcohol storage or anything just to minimize the employee cost so that's why I propose this CUP application means I put the application to merge. Okay. Does the Commission have any questions of the applicant? No? Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. At this time, we're open for public comment. Uh, if anybody would like to make a public comment regarding this item, please fill out a form and you've got three minutes to speak. Madam Secretary, has it, have we received it? Excuse me. Let me just say the public comments are closed at this point in time. Uh, Madam Secretary, have we received any correspondence on this item? We have not. Thank you. With that, we'll bring it back to the Commission. Uh, do we have a, a motion on this item? Mr. Chairman, I would like to motion to approve, uh, to adopt resolution approving condition use permit number 2017-31. Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 7-0 vote. Thank you. At this time, we're going to move on to our work study uh, program, our work study item. Uh, the first item that we're going to discuss is the discussion of the proposed campus for Christ Our Savior Parish, located at 2000 West Alton Avenue. Allie, are you going to be speaking on this? Jerry. So this is a study session for the new proposal for Christ Our Savior. They're proposing to construct more or less about 46,000 square feet of a campus church. Um, and with approximately um, 1,200 square, um, 1200 seats will be available at, at the church. And I'll get over to this. Um, so just to give you the background in terms of the location of the property, it's located on the southeast corner of Rate Street in Alton, um, formerly known as Armstrong Ranch. The, it's the, the ranch itself has then been kind of subdivided into multifamily, single family, and um, we have the YMCA to the um, west of the property. And as you might have remembered, last year there was an application for the Artisan Village, which is being proposed just south of the um, subject site. So as mentioned, the um, location is within the Armstrong Ranch with this SD, or specific development number four, SD4. The lot size is roughly about 7.7 .7 acres. And currently, as indicated in the um, red triangular shape um, diagram, there is currently two modular offices as well as the parking structure that um, serves this um, church right now. So just to give you a quick background, the property itself was entitled back in 2004, which was conditional use permit number 2002-16, which the plan commission approved for the construction of a 2,700 seat, approximately 100,000 100, square foot cathedral on a 15-acre 15, 15 parcel, um, again, within Armstrong Ranch. So on to your left, you have more or less the site plan that was approved at that time. Um, since then, um, the Roman Catholic Diocese purchased the cathedral, which is in the city of Garden Grove, and therefore they no longer need or are desiring to develop um, in accordance to the entitlements that were approved back in 2002. Um, with that being said, um, the entitlements for this particular church have expired, and this is why the Christ Our Savior Catholic um, Parish is proposing a new conditional use permit. Um, so again, so any church within the specific development requires a conditional use permit. This is why the application is be before you today. Um, the project itself is going to be constructed in two phases, which I'll get into more detail once we get into the site plan. Um, so phase one is basically for the construction of an 18,000 square foot church with um, 200 seats. It's also going to incorporate a parish center, which is more or less the offices or administrative offices for, for the parish and a 4,600 square foot office and meeting room. 
Phase two involves the construction of a parish hall, as well as the demolition of the existing modular offices. In terms of staff's analysis, the proposed site plan pretty much complies with all of the Santa Ana Municipal Code's requirements, as well as the development standards identified in specific development number four. Um, in addition to that, parking, in terms of parking, 417 stalls are required. They are proposing to satisfy the 417 parking stalls during phase one, and then we'll have a total of 488 parking stalls at the conclusion of phase two. This more or less is what they're proposing in terms of their site plan. So as you can see, you have the church at the northeast corner of the parcel, at least the way it's being depicted on the site plan um, in terms of orientation, um, but not necessarily in terms of geographic orientation. But um, the church is on the northeast corner of the site plan, then to the south of that you have the hall, and then you have the parish center to the um, northwest corner, north, northeast corner, I'm sorry, and then the meeting room to the um, south of that. So the site plan itself was kind of developed in, in consideration of the existing facilities currently out there. Um, so the, the site plan was drafted in a way to keep in mind the logistics and the operations of the church. So um, they did not push the church closer to the street in order to preserve the existing improvements that they have already have conducted. As well, um, they kind of created this kind of campus-like, so it's not a very traditional um, church where you have it more closer to the street. They kind of wanted to create a, a, a sacred place that was kind of isolated and gave them that privacy that they needed. Um, so primarily, you have parking kind of surrounding the entire site plant, and that actually allows um, for pedestrian um, proximity to the buildings. It, it's a lot closer as well as there is a paseo that is being proposed off of Alton that goes directly to the primary entrance of the church. So in terms of circulation, that's, that's what you're looking in terms of configuration. So this is just a close-up of the proposed structures. Um, so I, I won't get into much detail into that unless um, the commissioners have any questions on the floor plans of, of the proposed buildings. <clears throat> so these are just some renderings of the proposed um, campus. It's very contemporary. It does have some um, elements in terms of um, plaster. Then you have some cladding and, and some metal louvers around the, the campus. So it's a very contemporary um, architecture. And then this is another rendering. So with that, that pretty much sums up my presentation. And then I'll be more than free to answer any of your questions. Does the commission have any questions of staff? <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I have one question. Going back to your slide about the project description. Uh, in, the, in the slide, you mentioned that the landscape setback has a front yard of 10 feet. And on the very beginning of your presentation, you note that the address is 2000 West Alton. So are they changing the address to rate or whatever this interior street is? Because I'm thinking if they're 10 feet from the front, wouldn't that technically be 10 feet from Alton? That's a minimum setback. And these development standards were um, amended when the Artisan Village project were approved. Um, so these development standards are more applicable to single family residential zones. Um, but the frontage is off of um, Alton Avenue. Okay, so but I'm just saying that when we're saying 10 feet front yard. Okay, that's minimum. Right. Okay, thank you. Beatrice? What is the uh, time frame between phase one and phase two, or is it all going to be done at uh, one time, or what's the... So there is a, um, I believe it's about two to three years. Um, the applicants here, he could probably better answer that particular question. Um, but just in terms of the code itself, as long as they're having some type of construction, the entitlements don't expire. Um, so the other um, CUP that was approved back in 2002 have, has now expired because there have was no um, construction or any movement by the church itself. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my other question is, you mentioned that the site development has two modular buildings. 
Uh, so the uh, when I look at the picture for the proposed site plan, is that the church in the hall, or is that the church? So the proposed site plan that I included does not actually depict the modular um, buildings. We will provide that to you for the actual hearing. But if you could look at the geographical um, aerial, um, more or less you, where the site um, letters are at, just above that, those are where the modular offices are currently in place. So those will remain until phase two. Once phase two is completed, they're going to be demolished. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, um, Jerry, as far as design is, is concerned, do how, how does that, I, I know we didn't review it on the design review, review committee, but is there different standards for, for church design versus other, other type of projects? Um, not necessarily. We have our design guidelines that are under special, special uses. It does have a category for churches, and they've met most of our requirements in terms of design, orientation, and providing that kind of middle courtyard area. Um, so we didn't feel the need to bring it to a design review, um, so therefore we're bringing it to all of you as a study session. They just don't see a lot of mix of you know, materials. It seems pretty... The materials are pretty bland. They do have a, a mix of different uh, materials being used. Um, they were kind of going more to, for contemporary um, architecture, so it is more of the blander sense compared to other um, Art Deco or, or whatnot. Um, but if you look at, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the um, our Lady of Los Angeles Cathedral, it's kind of very similar in, in that sense of architecture. Um, but we will provide the elevations for you, which do have a lot more details on them. Um, but they do have a very um, use of, of architectural elements throughout. Okay, thank you. We'll get that next next for the public hearing. That's correct. Commissioner Reno and all commissioners, this is also the time. If you have some comments on architecture, design, uh, bring them up now. It's an advance of the meeting. So yes, that's kind of what this whole forum is all about, to get your feedback on everything regarding the project. So if you do have some comments, uh, we'd love to hear them. Eric, first, Cynthia, next. Uh, a couple of comments. So what activities take place in the parish center? Because I see that, you know, I know what the church is for. I know what the meeting and office building are for. But the parish center, is that like the bookstore or? The, par the existing parish center? No, well, it says project description, uh, almost a 6,000 square foot parish center. Oh, I'm sorry, that's. That's a typo. It's just actually the parish hall. Oh, got it. All right. Okay. Um, and then the uh, the design. I wouldn't say it looks like Our Lady of Angels because that they call that the I think the gold amarillo. Um, but I think what it reminded me of and is uh, Callista. Um, Callista was a church that used to be on Garden Grove Boulevard. Saint Callista. Yeah, Saint Callista. I'm sorry, I got it. And. Uh, Personally, I like it, but I, I, I'm, uh, I'd like to hear what my other commissioners think about that. Cynthia? Um, one of the pictures, the first one of the proposed renderings, if we go back, one more. <clears throat> Those there's, are it. There's an arch there. there. The arch that's there, the very straight and then like a little square, just kind of stands out. So I don't see a lot of blending with the rest of the church. Is there a better picture or something that shows us how that there fits is in some, with the um, scheme? There is some terracotta around the building. Um, again, we didn't provide the elevation, the full elevations for for you tonight, um, but that does carry throughout some of the buildings as well. Th this particular. Um, um, portal or main entrance is there going to be the primary entrance so as you walk off the paseo from Alton this is what you're going to actually um, come across when you, when you enter the, the church and we also ask the applicant to provide some um, art or murals along the entrance so they're going to be providing those later on as well is that facing Alton or right this is facing Alton so the sidewalk there where the people are walking by is that so let me show you more or less where that's at. So this is facing um, Alton. Then you, I don't have a pointer with me, but um, you have more or less the roundabout. Let me, let me go to the actual site plan. 
Um, so you have rate, and then you have the roundabout. That is basically the sidewalk that, that you're, that's being depicted on the renderings. Then it's, then it's not facing, because Alton's over here, right? Alton's on your, um, if right. you're looking at that, it's on the right side. Far right. Correct. And the structure that I'm talking about is facing the roundabout? The, the portal itself, this canopy here, is facing Alton. So is there any type of, um, how much space between that and the street? It's approximately 140 feet. Okay. Is there anything that impedes folks from going onto the church campus? I'm, I'm thinking of graffiti, things like that. What keeps it from... So the campus is pretty much secured with gates that are going to be operational. So they're going to only be actually having access off Wraith Street um, for services. And then the gates off of... There's a gate off of Alton as well as of Jawar Lane that are going to be closed and will only be used as needed. Jack Warling. Yeah. What's that? Is that where the, the on the other side? Is Correct. That so be if you were from the school, right? But it's so, closed right now. Correct. Correct. So as you recall, there was an application for the artisan village right. that was approved. That is just south of this um, property. And Jaguar Way comes into just the parking lot of the church. That is correct. It won't go through to rate. No. No. Okay. No. And there is a um, seam wall that's going to divide YMCA and the actual church. Okay. And that was also, also strategically planned um, by the applicant to make sure that the campus itself is secured at all times. Okay. Thank you. So, Jerry, just let me clarify then. There's three ways of getting in and out of the church at this point in time. That is correct. However, only the main entrance off Ray will be accessible at all times. Right. The other two will be closed during non-operating hours? I Correct. They will just be used for um, special events that are going to be demanding higher um, volume of traffic. Okay. Since there's that access to Jaguar, through Jaguar, I understand there's been some recent signs up describing traffic? That's mm -hmm. correct. The school district put those signs up several months ago in response to the Shea Homes project that, that you approved and the council approved uh, okay. September, October last year. I'm only directed at the potential residents of that neighborhood informing them that, hey, there's, we're a school here, we have a lot of traffic, and just be aware. Okay. Just uh, one clarification on that. Thank you. Beatrice. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. One more question, and I'm just wondering if you know that. I'm just curious. Um, the uh, 1,250 seats, are they going to be uh, like a Temple Calvario type of seating or they're um, built in? Does the applicant know or do you know? Just curious. Um, most of them are built in. They're built in? Correct. Okay. With yep. some that will be obviously um, movable. Thanks. Ken? The Commissioner would like to uh, um, take a moment to recognize Father Steve Corres, the pastor of the, of the Christ of Savior Paris and also a member of the uh, um, Christ our Savior uh, Catholic community are here with us this evening. Um, the building a church in our city, in our city, would be, you know, the long overdue, in my opinion, at this location. Uh, since, as you notice, the public been granted since 2004, been 14 years. And um, to having a church in our city will provide direct economic and social benefit to the community. And as you know, well, definitely will be decrease in crimes and promote family values and improve government civility. I'm looking forward to support the project when coming in front of the commission. Thank you, Ken. Any other questions? Phil? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I appreciate that the Catholic Church uh, remain committed to that area of Santa Ana uh, through the parish there. Uh, you know, going from a cathedral to a smaller parish, I'm glad that you decided to, again, maintain a presence in that area. I live not too far from there, so I'm appreciative. Um, looking at the site plan that was approved back in 2004, it looked like the church was kind of, you know, directing itself more towards the street, more kind of public, not inward. And so I, I'm intrigued at how the plan kind of shifted from being towards the street, being towards integrating into the community to then 
kind of buffering itself with the parking. I personally would prefer it to be closer to the street, like in this case, closer to Alton instead of the old site plan to MacArthur, because obviously we have the homes coming in on MacArthur and Jaguar Lane. Um, as far as the design, I, I respectfully disagree. I don't think it reminds me much at all of the LA Cathedral. I think the LA Cathedral is just much more mammoth and, and larger, obviously, fitting of the term <coughs> cathedral. Uh, this one here is very simplified and very clean design. I, I mean, personally, I, I think one thing that I always look for in architecture is something iconic. And when I look at this, again, it, it looks like a very contemporary facility, as the buzzword seems to be so far, but I just hoped it would pop a little more. And so I, I, I understand, I respect what you guys are putting forward. I just wish it had a little bit more pop. Again, it's, it's a, again, I'm very appreciative that you guys are staying in the area. I just wish there was a little bit more here to look at. In this case here, I, I'm not as excited as far as the current design, but I'm hopeful that we'll see something when it comes to us for the hearing. Lynette? Um, that's kind of what I, where I was at with asking about the design. Jerry, I just want to confirm, on the, on the bottom of slide four, that is that the part that would be facing right where the, where you where the and street was the street or the cars would be coming in front of there on the bottom of four. Oh, actually, it's bottom page four of my printout. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's it. That's correct. So that is. That is correct. That is the proposed roundabout. So that is where the vehicle um, access will be from. So, so it's sort of an agreement. I'm, I'm, I'm very appreciative of the fact that, that the church is coming into that area. I, I was on the planning commission when we initially um, uh, discussed it way back when it was going to be a cathedral. And um, I, I can agree with Commissioner Becerra. I'd like it, since it's going to be such a great uh, attribution to the area and to, to that part of, of uh, the south end of town, I kind of like it to be really a wow factor when someone's driving on that street. And it kind of gave me the I, feeling that it was a little bit more institutionalized, a little kind of kind of um, colder feeling. And I know it is contemporary, but if there was any way to just really make it pop or just like a wow factor, um, for me, that would be something that would really give it what it deserves in that, in that part of town. Um, but I, I, I'm really excited that, that this is finally coming together and we're, we're getting a, a, a church in that area. Thank you. Eric? Um, I'll, I'll clarify. I didn't say much about the design, but I think one of the things that it brought uh, forward to me was Fatima and Fatima. Um, not the old Fatima, but the new Fatima, which is, on, I guess, depending on where you're at, on the other side of, of those hollowed grounds. And so this, that's a circular building. Uh, but I think what brought that feeling to me was the cross that, that is on top. Um, and I did a pilgrimage there two years ago, um, and it, it struck me, and that's kind of where my comments came from, is sort of the, the pure white uh, uh, buildings is what Fatima has in, in Portugal. Thank you. That's it. Beatrice. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. One more uh, question. I know we're going to get the whole packet and details in, in the hearing, but um, is there any proposed signage for the church? And if yes, where would it be? Um, I believe there's a proposal for some monument signs off of Alton. And then there's probably a directory signed off of um, Rate that's going to be, be installed as well. Thank you. Uh, Bill? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to add a little bit more to my comments, and that is, you know, churches throughout our city a lot of times are in the middle of neighborhoods. They're right next door to somebody's house. You know, sometimes that neighbor may or may not like it, depending on the day of the week and the amount of traffic, I understand. Um, and I'm in no way saying that this should be up against the existing homes or anything of that sort. But I, I just, I hope that when all is said and done with the, the layout and the architecture, that it is very inviting and that it welcomes the community because you have a lot of institutions in that area, the high school, the YMCA, and I think, you know, if you've seen that area, as many of you in the parish know, it's a very well landscaped area. There's a lot of trees, a lot of tree canopies, and it's very inviting for walking. So I hope that as this site develops, that it continues to foster that sort of uh, inviting nature. And I think that 
you know, you have a really wonderful opportunity there. You're, you're right in the middle of a lot of great things. So I hope that that's what comes to us at um, a later date. Thank you. Any other questions of staff at this point in time? Hearing none, uh, would we, I'd like to close that discussion for now and Vince? Would you like to hear from the applicant at all? In that's that's where I was going. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> that's all right. It's okay. No, no, no. it's okay. Um, would the applicant at this time like to come up and speak about the project and field any questions that we might have from a commission point of view? And there's no time limit on your discussion at this point in time. I'm sorry, what was that last No date? time limit on your discussion. Thank you. Take as much time as you need. Okay, thank you. Um, I think staff did a good job of presenting the overview of the project. I took some notes of the points and Can questions you, you all. Second? I'm sorry, would you identify yourself? Sorry, David Pfeiffer, Doma Studio Architecture, 2800 Third Avenue, San Diego. Great. 92103. So um, I think staff did a great job of presenting the project in an overview. I've taken some notes on the points you raised. Maybe I address those, and if there's further questions beyond that, um, I'll be here at your leisure. Um, so there was a question about the timing, and it's between phase one and phase two, and that's contingent upon fundraising. They're fundraising for the first three buildings and site improvements here. Optimistically, it, they'd like the occupancy of that parish hall five years after those first phases are done. And to be clear, once that parish hall is built, I'm, I'm gonna, an exhibit that will be in your packet. But this is the phase one plan with Alton on this side. And you can see the shaded area. These are the existing modular buildings. And once, so this is how the site will look at the completion of phase one. And then in phase two, they'll build the parish hall, remove those modular structures, and complete the parking. So we bring our parking numbers up from 417 to 480. And these modular structures will be removed from the site. There were some questions about the terracotta details. And the ideas there were, those are at special places. So it's at the primary entry portal into the campus um, at the end of that Paseo that connects at Alton. So there's this uh, entry archway portico with some relief or mosaic artwork that's on the public side. And then you walk between the buildings into the cloister. Uh, the, the four buildings really kind of frame the corners of this cloister, which is an interior uh, sacred place. And by design that uh, makes it a sacred place. There's a sense of entry and arrival. You're leaving the parking lot, the secular world, and entering someplace special. Um, practically, it also allows the campus to be secured. And practically, it also allows us to buffer some of the outside influences in these more um, pastoral settings. For example, the YMCA, the swimming pool, the <coughs> soccer, and the football and sports that happen at the high school. Those are our neighbors but we're using the buildings and this cloister to buffer the interior of this sacred place from those outside influences. <coughs> um, there was a question about what activities are in the parish center. So little nomenclature, the parish center really is the office building and that's front and center, It'd be just behind the uh, mosaic you see in this rendering that's up there. And that's the offices, the welcoming center, the Priest and pastoral staff will be there. There are two meeting rooms there that serve as conference rooms and also meeting spaces. Then there's the parish hall, which is dinners, dining, social events there. That's the phase two structure. So I hope I can address that. Um, uh, there was discussion about the front, what is the front yard, and, and it is Alton. Rate Street is actually a private street. The, the section where the roundabout is north, that is a private street between Alton and the roundabout. 
Um, 12, there was a question about the seats, and there'll be fixed seating in pews. There'll be some chairs um, for flexible, maybe 5%. Uh, flexibility for uh, accessible individuals as well as at the choir and in cry rooms and places like that. Um, and just a little background on the design. Some of you loved it, some of you wished it was more and uh, the theme here is that it is an iconic structure and it's 48 feet to the top of that tall roof and the metaphor here is there's these three bent elements with glass connecting them. So we're using the metaphor of interjecting light into this space. And three is a, an important number in Christianity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we think of these three forms all connected by those trinity of religious elements. So, um, and getting back to the design, the, the church is really, uh, in between the two sections of Rate Street, or what is now Jaguar. So it's very visible approaching the site from the north or the south, and its height will make it iconic and very visible above tree canopies from Alton and even from MacArthur. And uh, the idea of the articulation of the architecture is through relief in the building facade. So it's not about lots of colors like a Victorian house. It's about relief, deep set windows. If uh, when you get your full packages, you'll see the steps on these roof lines. So it's really a celebration of light and shadow in our bright Southern California sky and light levels, as opposed to embellishing with a lot of colors and different materials. And then once again, using the precious materials, the terracotta, perhaps some bronze, at the most important places at the entries. There's the terracotta at the entry into the church, terracotta at the primary entry into the campus. That's the idea behind it. And the drama, the iconic nature of it, is through its verticality and its play of light and shadow. Um, and the last item I had here was about monument sign. There will be a monument sign at the north end of the Paseo out at Alton. Um, we've had internal discussions about perhaps some other signage at the cul-de-sac, the roundabout. Um, those are still being developed though. So those were the comments I picked up uh, that you all espoused. If you have any other questions, I'd welcome them now. Does commissioners have any uh, questions of the applicant? Bill? <clears throat> one, one theme or one term that I keep hearing throughout this discussion that kind of shocks me is secure, the need to feel secure. And, and most parishes tend to be of the community. And so the folks that live there, I mean, unless there's a real striking reason, you know, they feel safe in their community, hopefully. I, I know I live nearby there. I feel very safe in that community. And so it, was, is, there, is there a real reason why that seems to be kind of a, a reoccurring concern, securing? Uh, it comes from the practical aspect of securing the facility in off hours. Mm -hmm. These entryways into the campus are very broad, 24 foot wide, a pair of 12 foot gates. Um, so when those gates are open, it is open and welcoming and very passable. Um, but the ability to close that off after hours is important to secure the campus when folks are not there. That's the metaphor, or okay. excuse me, that's the response. Eric? Yeah, um, the, as, as I was thinking about the design and the amount of white that there is, um, the, the sanctuary or the interior space I thought would be uh, incred it's got to be hot, um, and meaning the reflection off of that white. And that goes to Commissioner Becerra's comments about, uh, I think, needing more tree canopy, uh, more of a tree canopy, because I'm looking at that now where the, the bell is, and it's hard for me to explain it, but right behind there in that open space. And it, it just seems to me that that would be a, a great place to get a tan and a sunburn. Um, because it would just, 
the, the reflection of off all those buildings might be overwhelming. There are bosques of trees in that space. And once again, in your packet, you'll have this landscape concept plan. And I would say on that rendering, I can apologize. We may have taken some artistic license and eliminated that bosque of eight okay. trees. Um, we need to temper, we agree we need to temper that sunlight uh, in that courtyard space to make it nice. I wish I... Yeah, no, I, I can, I think you're pointing to the, the, the site plan and it's more evident there than it is. Yes, in, sir. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Appreciate the comment. Any other questions of the applicant at this time? Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. We'll bring it back to the commission. Um, would any? Oh, sir. Hi. I'm uh, Joe Navo. I'm director of construction for the Diocese of Orange. Okay. Um, I just want to one point on the security. Uh, we live in different times now, and uh, we've had three churches uh, arsoned. Uh, and uh, we lost two of them. Uh, in Santa Ana, Our Lady of Lavong, a similar type. It's the, the campus is secure. Everything is sort of in the middle, and it comes, you enter and come in through the inside. But even in that church, we had uh, a, a person go in with a lighter fluid and put it on the pews and try to set them on fire. So it, it, is, uh, it is a different time. We also have the issue with the high school next to us, so we are very conscious about uh, the children. Uh, they're not children. There are children, but uh, driving through the campus, so we wanted to try to not that make it unconvenient for them to uh, use this as a thoroughfare to get through. So we, you mentioned the gates. The gates would be closed so that it wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't come through and go through through the campus and exit or enter the site during school days. The, those gates would be open during uh, the, the weekends when our services are there. We would have that. And in addition, that rate, it says Rate Street, it's, it's, a, it's really um, entry into the site. It's shared by us and the YMCA. So we both use that. It's, it's in a, we have a reciprocal agreement with the Y on the parking, so they, uh, they share are parking uh, up to 100 spaces on that. So that was a, an agreement that we made with them because they were short on parking as well. So that works uh, during, uh, mostly during the weekdays that they use that uh, portion when our, uh, when our facilities aren't in use during this the daytime. Is, uh, Sagerson School? Uh, no, the YMCA, YMCA, has a, YMCA. YMCA has a reciprocal parking agreement. So I, anyway, I just wanted to clarify that. Uh, uh, it, it security is, is a more and more of an issue that we have to face, uh, and it's not just us. I think uh, most religious institutions these days are, are looking hard at their campuses uh, and, and making, secure, making them more secure than what, what they are today, or what they've been in the past, sorry. Cynthia, you have a question? Yes. So right now, as we know, rate is used um, in the morning, school traffic right. and after school. Is that going to change? No. It's, we can't stop it. It happens. But we've put delineators up there because they were making U-turns, right. right? And then we've increased the size of the, the radius to handle that. And we've widened the road so if they're going to come through, they're not going to block it. So the, even if somebody stopped there, they would still be able to, tra uh, to drive around it. And uh, we have, uh, is it red curves now? Or signs we would put signs no parking but it's very hard to police and so we're making all the provisions that we can knowing that that you know that's not going to be able to get a uh, stop of what's happening there today we can manage it uh, we think the lineators worked a lot very well uh, traffic can't make those u-turns they have to go all the way around now to make that u-turn and get back out thank you any other questions of the applicant Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one other thing, uh, Justin, would you like to talk at this point in time? No? Okay. Um, I'll bring it back to the commission and uh, we'll go for any final comments at this point in time. Start with Phil. Lynette? 
Nope. Eric? Uh, no, other than good luck on this. Cynthia? Um, I think that um, the decor is a resounding theme. Um, architecture, I think, bringing in something different is refreshing and it distinguishes the church itself. But in considering, uh, you know, bringing some color to it, maybe some murals, some um, religious art, um, something that, um, you know, stained glass, things that are traditional, um, that can bring it together and give it a little bit more of a, a wow effect. But those are my only comments. Okay. Beatrice. Uh, I just want to uh, you know, thank you all for being here um, and for, be, for bringing this uh, so far. Uh, I belong to a church. It's called Rayo de Luz. It's a uh, Hispanic-speaking church. And we had identified uh, Maine and Warner as a site for a new church. And I had to tell you, I mean, it's really hard to fundraise. So, you know, I was asking about the different phases. So good luck with your fundraising. I really do um, wish you the best of luck. And we need more facilities like these, you know, like this church and like, like the one that we want to propose in the future. So good luck. Ken. I'd just like to say thank you for um, taking on and continuing this endeavor. I know with the church making the change uh, with the Crystal Cathedral, Christ Cathedral, so uh, this is wonderful that you're continuing to do it, and good luck with the fundraising on this, and I think you've done a great job at this point in time with the project, and please, uh, if there's anything we can help you with, just let us know. Thank you. Anything else? With that, we're done with the work study session. And we'll move on to staff comments. Any staff comments, please? All right. Any, uh, we'll start with commission comments. We'll start with you, Ken. Beatrice? Fast meeting, let's keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> Get it under the wire at 630, right? Okay. <laughs> Phil will drag it out a little bit. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Cynthia? None. Eric? None. Lynette? None tonight, thank you. Phil? No. <laughs> well, what a surprise. Wow. <laughs> With that said, uh, we, are, we are adjourned. Thank you for the evening. Thank you. Anybody who needs parking validation can get it right up here in front. Yeah. You haven't got your validation yet? If you didn't get validation, please come up here. We have tickets now. Already got it. Keeping up parking validations.